And what, what, can I, what can I give people? And I was thinking about my own life. I mean, first you got to be the minister to yourself first. And, 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 and I was thinking, uh, what can I give? And the, 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 the scripture came to me, uh, one that we know so well, Hebrews 11 and 1. Y'all yeah. know what it says. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and what I focus on, because in my line of work, I listen to a bunch of elderly people from different backgrounds, and they said, Kenneth, I don't have money for food. They said, Kenneth, I can't pay for my medicine because I don't have the money. Kenneth, I don't know where I'm going to get my next meal because my social security check is not that much. But I thank God. That's what they tell me. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening to these people right here, and through all, all that they're going through, they're yet praising God. And it starts with what? What they believe. And so if I was going to give you a, a, a subject today, the subject would be, what kind of faith do you have? What kind of faith do you have? And I'm going to talk about four faith, if you don't mind. Some people got that faith, believe it or not. If the James inform us that faith without work is what? Dead. Dead. In other words, if your faith is real, you will reduce what? Fruit. Yeah. Have you noticed that a tree that's alive produces fruit? Yeah. That is good works. Mm -hmm. Or evidence your faith is genuine. I observe that you don't have to motivate since you're Christian to do what the Holy Spirit is already doing. Uh -huh. So what are you saying, Black? Thanks for asking. When you come to 1185 Oxbow Lane, there should be no need in priming you. Because you say you got faith. And the Bible says faith without works is dead. And I believe everybody here is alive. Can I get a witness today? It, it says if your faith, faith is dead, it will be obvious by the lack of good fruit. An abundance of selfless thoughts and cruel words and immoral deeds. Now, I'm not saying nobody got some dead faith here, but that's what dead faith means. And then there's another type of faith that, that, that outside in the world is that demonic faith. It's that James teaches us that even demons believe and shudder in the name of Jesus. That's James 2 and 19. It says their faith is intellectual. What are you saying, preacher? I got a master's last week, Sister Eva, but it ain't going to get me to heaven. I am a CEO of a Fortune 500, but it won't get me to heaven. I understand that it's necessary to make a living in this world, but it shouldn't be the only thing that I believe in. That's right. That's right. Amen. It says here, I said, it says right here, but rebellious people choose to serve different masters. They serve their children. I know we love mine. I, I love Destiny, Dominique, and Ebony. But they're not my master. I thank God for my little car out there, but it's not my master. I, I thank God for the house I live in, but it's not my master. We're talking about that dem demonic faith where you believe in something other than God. And if another faith I want to talk about is that vain faith. I know we ain't got no vain people here today. Not everyone who said that Jesus is Lord of their life who enter the kingdom of heaven on the day of his return. Only those who actually do what? The will of God are permitted to entry. Responding to altar calls, saying the sinner's prayer, or religiously and gently tithing, these alone would not save you. For the Bible said that if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, I shall be what? Saved. Can I get a witness today? We're talking about that vain faith. 
Please don't be the person who complete all tasks of the religious milestones and cried out on the final day, Lord, Lord, only to hear the dreadful words, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's coming from Matthew 7, 21 and 23. But the faith I hope all of us have is that saving faith. The message of John 3, 16 is so clear. So God so loves every one of us. He sent his only begotten son to live among us and said, whosoever believe on Jesus will have eternal life. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10 provides us with some additional details. You are saved by his grace through faith. It didn't say through my intellect. It didn't say through my vanity. It didn't say through my demonic faith. It says I'm saved by his grace. The Bible says his grace is sufficient for thee. So therefore there no one should have a monopoly on what God can do. Because it's an, I said it's enough for him to go around. Have you ever saw somebody that like God only talks to them? That God can only save them? Y'all won't beat me up but I'm going to say it anyway. I, 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 my my great grandparents was Baptists. And, and, and first lady, I used to see them smoke at the revival. The preacher get through preaching, he drank after them, he get through preaching. And they do all kinds of things right there at church. And as a little boy, you know, we're impressioned. That's all you know what you see when you're kids. But the Bible says when I was a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. What am I saying? When I was yet watching them sin and partaking and once I got saved I put away those things that was not like him that's that saving faith right there but I, 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 I want to talk to you just a little bit here if y'all don't mind just, I'm, and I'm almost done see we got all kinds of things we're going to the, it says when I'm in doubt my faith is According to Jesus, Philippians 4 and 13 says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. When I'm afraid, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, the Lord himself before you and will be with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. When I'm worried, according to Peter 5 and 7, it says cast all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. Faith without doubt, it says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not into thy own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And when you feel like that somebody had wronged you, Romans 12 and 19 says, uh, it says, But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He said, I will repay them, said the Lord. Proverbs 16 and 7 says, When a man weighs, pleases the Lord, he even make your enemies be at peace with him. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 37 and 4 says, It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of the heart. The Roman in 12 and 13 says, For the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commandments of the Lord, your gift that I have given you this day, and carefully follow them, You'll always be on the top and never at the bottom. But what that tells me, if my ways are pleasing to God, that he will give me the desires of my heart. He said in his word that I will be the head, not the tail. No matter what go on in America, they look at me and say that I'm left in, but my God said that I will be the head and not the tail. And if you want salvation, uh, Romans 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, Heart, and then raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Without force in uncertain times, you don't know if you're going to make it. Now, Romans 8 and 37, nay, in all things, we are more than a conqueror. Sometimes we don't know how we're going to make it. Sometimes we don't know what to do next. But the Bible said that we are more than a conqueror. We're talking about faith today. Uh, if you believe it, say amen. Uh, if you believe it, tell God thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ain't nobody bigger than you. Uh, nobody better than you, God. They said in your word that you're the creator of everything, uh, that you have all power, heaven and earth. 
earth in your hand. Uh, Matthew 7 and 20 said, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, If you have faith, a grain of a size of a mustard seed. Let's stop right there. You know what a mustard seed is. It said it don't take much. We make this thing hard when it don't have to be. I was working and a lady gave all of us a mustard seed. And it's so small I almost couldn't see it. So that tells me if, if, if he said that if I just have the faith the size of a mustard seed, I can tell any situation to move. Yeah, we're going to be tried. We're going to be tempted. We're going to come time get despondent. But guess what? The word says, if I have the faith the size of a mustard seed, I can tell any situation to move. And I understand what preacher you saying, but then, you know, it sounds good when you read that, but you're not in my shoes. I've been through some things in my short life. I tell you, all things, according to the Bible, work together for the good of them that love the Lord according to his purpose. Well, black, how can Luther the love one work? It should strengthen my faith. That's how it works. See, that's how faith works when you're going through something. And, and, and I'm reminded when the disciples went out, they went out two by two. And I believe that, that even if when they was going out, one may got despondent, one may got discouraged, but, but the Bible says we become helpless one to another when we're going through. See, I can't make this by myself. I need somebody to believe with me that I'm going to be all right. You don't want to be around nobody that's a disbeliever today. We were looking at the word today and we was talking about Simon. Even he had to recognize the power of the Holy Ghost. And he asked Peter to pray for him because he said he didn't want those things to come upon him. We ought to be just like that. When we get caught up in a situation, we ought to just say, Lord, forgive me. See, this is what faith will take, do for you. It'll take you back to repentance. It'll take you back to forgiveness. Nobody's perfect but God. When I listen to the old people, and I'm going to be there one day by the grace of God, and I hope I'm prepared, say they can't eat because they don't have money. But they yet, even on a recorded line, Sister Eva, they talking to me about God. They can't work, but they yet believe in God. The Bible said that he took two loaves, I mean, two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000. And the Bible says he has no respected person. So whatever you need, just have faith to believe that it will happen. See, I, I'm learning, and I, and I confess it out loud because I believe if I speak it, I can overcome it. I got to get out of my own way. See, sometimes we don't want to examine ourselves to see where we're at. Because we're afraid somebody's going to talk about it. They're talking about you anyway. So you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. So I use the word very exclusionary. I, I talk about me. Because of my faith allow me to be an overcomer. I'm not ashamed what I done been through. I hate it happened sometimes. But it brought me to the point of my belief. The Bible said we must confess our faults one to another. Well, I ain't telling my business. I don't want to know your business. I just want to pray for you. I'm going through something. It ain't what I'm going to ask. I ain't got to ask you what you're going through. But can we just pray? See, it's a process to make this faith work for you. How many of you would go to the doctor and, and, and have an open heart surgery and a doctor don't know how to use the tools? You would want to find another doctor, wouldn't you? Well, guess what? God has given us all the tools. We got to know how to use them and when to use them. It's called faith. Faith to move a mountain. I'm reminded that uh, if, when my enemies come before me, God said he will hide me. Because I believe in his word. When I'm sick, I know that I can be like the woman that had the issue of blood. If I can just touch, I said if I can just touch the hem of his garment, that I can be made whole. When I don't know what I'm going to do, if I can just say, Lord, all I know to do is just say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread, and we give our debt as we give our debt. That's enough for me to know that God is going to answer my prayer. It don't take much to talk.
talk to God. I don't have to put in no secret code. I don't have to pay a cell phone bill. But all I got to do is just get down on my knees. Lord, here I am. I'm standing in your need of prayer. Faith will deliver you. Faith will set you free. Faith will give you joy. Faith will make all mountains be moved. How many believe it? Tell God thank you. Faith. What kind do you have? See, Sister Jones, I was, I, I, I was at work. I'm going to just tell you how God is with faith, and I'm going to be done. In the beginning of our annual enrollment period, they said, all of y'all got to work every Saturday and every Sunday. And God knows my heart. So, so last week, I was... Uh, when the uh, pastor wife friend of verse, I did not know that it would change until the day that I acknowledged that. And, and so I rushed down the highway. I'm really going 800 miles per hour. Literally. Lord, protect me because I'm trying to get to church. But how many know God made a way that I ain't got to work on no more Saturdays or something? Can somebody tell God thank you? And tell you said if you're ready to please it to you, that he will give you what? The of your heart. Can I get a witness today? You see, 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 we say God know our heart, but he really do know your heart. He really do know your heart. He know I needed to come to 80, 1185 Oxbow Lane. He knew that. And so he made a way where I ain't got to work on Sunday. He made a way I ain't got to work on a Saturday. Because my faith, I told God, I said, Lord, I don't like to miss church. And I understand that I need the job because he gave it to me. But he knew I needed his word more than, his, than the job. Because he said that he will supply all of your needs. How, what you said? All of them according to what? His riches and glory. So we have no reason to be without today. See, see, and I'm almost done. I could have been a millionaire by now, literally. I wasted a lot of money. See, the thing about God, when God gives you something, you have to become good stewards of it. And what that means is that you have to start being responsible for what he gives you. Because, see, when he gives it to you, that means he gave it to you in season. Pay attention. In season, we want a lot of things out of season. And I've been guilty of that. Yeah. So I'm not just talking to, to, and don't point the fingers at me. I'm talking about me too. Uh, and then when I didn't get it, I probably got this yeah. But the word said his timing is not mine. Yeah. And we talked about faith. It said pay, faith work in patience. Yeah. Don't feel good, but we just said it worked for you good. All things. All things. Huh? All things. So as I close this evening, I'll ask the question, what kind of faith do you have? No matter what you're going through, your faith will keep you. It wasn't your best friend, because we can all talk as friends, but until you believe what we're talking about, it don't work no way. So it has to be your faith. You got more faith than you know because you got here this morning. Somebody didn't make it. Can we give God a hand praise today? Can we tell God thank you? God bless you. I pray again that I've said something that would encourage your heart and your mind. You're back into the hands of our first lady.